हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एल बी गोइंग टू शो द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ ड्रॉप न्यूक्लियस बाय अ विट्रोटिना सर्जन एंड द टिप्स फॉर फेको फ्रैगमेंटेशन सो हियर इन दिस केस कंप्लीट न्यूक्लियस हैज ड्रॉप इन सी एन हैज बीन सूचर्ड बाय द एंटी सेगमेंट सर्जन विच इज ग्रेट एंड anesthesia has been augmented with bupivacaine i always prefer 25 gauge valve cannula for making the active ports for infusion it is okay to have non valve ports are made at 3 mm from the limbus and always check the infusion before starting the infusion cannula now the first thing to do is clear the vitreous from the anterior chamber so first clear the vitreous and uh, let the nucleus get free and then toggle on off cutter so when you switch off the cutter you can use the aspiration only to aspirate the cortex iop is maintained throughout at 30 to 40 mm of mercury i am going to use constellation machine here the chandelier illumination can be used that is allows good visualization and particularly you can use your endo illuminator for manipulating the nucleus particularly in hard grade cataracts Now Zeiss Resite viewing system is used here. The first step is to free the nucleus from the vitreous. Now, if PVD is there, we can use PFCL to safeguard the macula. Whenever there is a harder grade cataract, I always use PFCL. Now, a separate scleral incision is made for the phragmaton. The ports, if there are non-valved, you can close them with the plugs. always start with 50% power 5 to 10 pulses per second and 150 mercury of vacuum set the iop of 30 to 40 and the most important parameter to check here is the power because if you keep higher power there will be chattering and the fallibility of the pieces will be less so the idea is to keep the power optimum so once you catch hold of the nucleus you can emulsify most of it whenever the pieces are on the vitreous gently use suction to lift the piece off the vitreous and then emulsify and very tiny pieces entangled with vitreous can be cut by vitrectomy probe later so don't go too close to the retina and always uh, use pfcl if you have a doubt that your maneuvers can endanger macula immediately after this scleral incision is sutured so that we have again a watertight vitreous chamber here and then proceed with the vitrectomy whether to induce pvd or not is a personal choice both have pros and cons if pvd is already there complete it if it is not there i generally just uh, watch for the peripheral lesions and do endo laser or cryo some surgeon plan to do pvd in all cases that may prevent pvd in the future and pvd induced breaks but might prolong the surgical duration and itself can cause uh, breaks during the surgery so uh, it's your choice whether to do a complete pvd and complete vitrectomy now the next important step is to place the iol if ccc is uh, good we can place a three piece iol always go step wise the first step is to place the three piece iol in the anterior chamber now rotate the uh, haptics in the sulcus and then do the optic capture during this maneuvers the infusion is kept off so always go this three step wise if you try to push the iol directly into the sulcus in the first go it might dislocate in the vitreous cavity so always put in the ac first and then rotate it gently into the sulcus for emetropic power you always reduce 5% for sulcus placement but if you are planning optic capture you can also use the same power which you have calculated earlier whenever you take out the ports either plug the port or use a endo light through the port so that you avoid vitreous incarceration while you are removing the ports if the ports are not self sealing always suture with 70 vicryl particularly if you are keeping the vitreous cavity filled with fluid I always keep a air bubble in the anterior chamber to avoid AC collapse in the post-operative period. Sometimes it happens because of hypotony. For more such videos, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.